Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to review the Tiny7 brushed quadcopter. This is a 75 millimeters brushed quadcopter. There are two versions. One is the advanced one, which comes with extra canopies and extra batteries. And I chose to get the basic one, which comes only with a receiver. This is the FR Sky version and only one battery is included. In addition, it has a smaller brother, the Tiny6, which is a 65 millimeters brushed quadcopter and I will put a link to it in the description in the video as well. Inside the package we're getting the quadcopter with the battery already installed. This is by the way a 500 milliampere hour one cell battery and it's ready to be 30C. And we're also getting this adapter that enables you to charge the battery. So there are no spare props, no spare batteries. That's all what you get in this version. This quadcopter features 720 core motors. The FR Sky receiver is AC800 receiver and the VTX is a 25 milliwatt 16 channels VTX. Let's quickly weigh it up. The weight without the battery is 32.3 grams and if we add in the battery, it's 44.4 grams. Under the hood, we've got this AC800 FR Sky D8 receiver. And the board is an SP Racing F3 board with a built-in 25 milliwatt 16 channels VTX. Now, in case you're looking for the USB port, it is located right underneath the battery. So you can see here we have a micro USB port. On the right side here, we have two buttons. The right one is used to change the channels on the VTX and the left one is the boot button. So in case you want to flash a new version, you will have to press it and then connect it to your computer. Charging is done with the provided adapter. By the way, you have a switch here so you can choose between 500 milliampere hour to 200 milliampere hour. Probably it's the same one that's included in the Tiny6. That's why they have the switch. Then just plug it to a USB port. And you can see now the green indicator is on and when the charging process will be finished, this indicator will be turned off. In order to bind the Tiny7 to your Taranis, first put your Taranis on D8 mode, channels 1 to 8. Then you can just connect a battery to the quadcopter and you need to wait for the AC800 receiver to start flashing. Now you can see it's flashing, we hit bind. And you can see now the LED indicator is solid and the binding procedure was successful. Then you can just exit it, disconnect the battery and your quadcopter is ready to go. By the way, once we plug the battery, you can see that we're getting even an RSSI indication, which is a nice feature. Let's see how the VTX adjustment is being done. So in the instruction manual, we can see, you can see that we have here this frequency table. So once you press this button over here, it's going to switch between all these modes. So short pressing this button cycles between all the available channels. This is not a convenient method, especially for a guy like me, which is a colorblind. And it's going to be a little bit hard for me to set my favorite band, which is 5860, but eventually I will probably succeed in doing so. Overall, I think that King Kong did a pretty nice job with this quadcopter. However, it does have some flaws. First of all, there is no built-in buzzer, which means if you're going to leave it on a field, it's going to be a little bit hard for you to find it, even though the yellow color is going to help. Second of all, there is no built-in OSD, and this quadcopter doesn't have a lot of punch, which means if you're looking for a calm indoor flyer, for a beginner, this might be the perfect quadcopter for you. And from what I've seen so far, it's also a very doable one. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about this quadcopter, feel free to ask it in the comments section below and see you on my next videos. Goodbye.
Ryan.